there. So I just want to let you know that you'll um, be recorded and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I have a PowerPoint presentation, so while I'm doing that, I won't really be able to see the chat. You're welcome to put questions in there, but I'm my plan is to what's oh, reminding me about this meeting. Sorry, my computer's going a little crazy. Um, so you're welcome to put questions in the chat if you think of them, but my plan is to go through my PowerPoint and then come back to questions that may be there. Um, also, so I am Miss Swalina for APUS um, and Miss Ponty, one of the Calvert High Guidance Counselors is on the meeting as well. Um, so just kind of a quick informational thing there. So let me go ahead and try to share my screen and get my PowerPoint loading here. Just bear with me here for a second. OK, so. Miss Ponty, are you we good? You see in my screen? Yep, everything looks beautiful, Miss Walina. Awesome. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, as I said, my name is Miss Walina. There's just a little bit of background information on here for those of you who haven't met me before. I've uh, been teaching 21 years, including nine in Pennsylvania, 12 at Calvert High and AP in both states for a total of 15 years. Um, and I have a bachelor's and a master's plus about 45 credits. So um, a lot of experience and training in the College Board. So just a little bit of background about me. Um, what is AP? So AP stands for Advanced Placement. It's a program created by the College Board, which is the same company that does like the SAT tests and the PSAT tests. So if as a parent you have not encountered them yet, you will at some point as your child journeys through. Um, the idea behind those classes is that it's meant to give high school students the opportunity to take college level classes while still in high school. It's very challenging and rigorous and freshmen in high school taking a class that's basically meant for freshmen in college. So it's like they're skipping four grades. So that is something to think about when kids ask about the difficulty of what they're doing. They're essentially skipping to freshman year in college in terms of the content. So just a reminder that it is difficult. It is doable, but it is difficult. I have to tell the kids all the time. Don't forget you like skip four grades. Um, when I went to visit Calvert Middle School, I asked them to think about what kind of student they were. And I do have these kind of characteristics of what kind of students typically have success in AP. So students who have strong reading and writing skills, students who have a strong interest in history, but I will say you don't have to love history to do good in AP US. I have some kids who really love history and that really helps them. And I have some kids who are taking it not necessarily because they really love history, but because they're fairly good at it and they want to advance themselves closer to college. And that's OK, too. It's not a make or break. Um, a student that's organized, a student that's self motivated, has good time management, willing to accept constructive criticism. Um, in this piece, we learn different kind of writing and skills that students probably haven't done before. So I need students who are willing to learn that they have to write a little bit differently in order to match what the College Board is looking for. Um, sometimes students might have a block about, well, I'm a good writer and this is how I do it. Um, because the AP kind of rubrics are very spelled out, so we need to kind of match with what they're looking for. Um, next is honest and responsible about completing homework. There is specific homework. We'll talk more about that as we go on. Um, so they need to be able to commit to doing homework um, repeatedly and willingness to participate and ask for help when needed. So um, they need to be willing to raise their hand and offer an answer in class, whether they're 100% confident that it's the right answer or not, and be able to say to raise their hand and say, I really don't understand. Could you explain it again or in a different way? So that you know, I don't lose them. A lot of times students will sit there and you know, I think they're with me and they might not communicate that. So the more they communicate that I'm losing them, the, the better that I can help them. Um, so when parents are trying to figure out, you know, should my student take AP and students are trying to figure out, this is the big th biggest thing I say. If you can compare what kind of student they are to this list and they match up with most of these characteristics, they're probably in good shape. If they don't, you might want to think through your options. Um, the next piece is what to expect from me. So genuine concern and care for student success. Although it's a college class, I am a high school level teacher and I understand freshmen for the most part and try to work through that 
process of getting them to where they need to be. A strong knowledge of US history. Um, summer workshops available. Hopefully, I don't know with COVID what we're going to be able to offer, but we should be able to offer some type of help, whether it's virtual or in person, some type of help to get students ready for the class. Um, I'm available at lunchtime um, pretty much every day of the school week. Um, I sometimes run review sessions before and after school, whatever is available. Um, there are online learning enhancement tools that help um, online things associated with the textbook, other websites, videos, all kinds of things that I share with them. I have clear expectations of work ethic and classroom behavior. I've organized assignments with clear due dates. Um, I typically give homework assignments in like the unit as a whole and space them out so they know, for example, the current students should know what their homework is between now and like early March. So we're finished. We're just starting a unit. So till we're finished this unit so they know what's coming. So the idea behind that is so the students can like chunk what they have to do. They can work around if they know they have a busy night or something else that's going on. Um, they can kind of work that out. And I'm someone who will challenge their student and make sure that they're doing their best to get up to that level. Um, the AP content, it's divided into nine units, um, but I sort of jokingly, but not joking, say that we cover everything that ever happened in US history. So we start with pre-Columbian at 1491 and we go until current day. Um, the textbook that we use includes Obama's presidency. Um, so we go to as current as we can. Um, AP divides it into nine units, as you see here. Um, and um, one of the things I'll talk about in a minute is that we are taking an AP test in May. So in terms of what's going on throughout the year, we are covering all of this history and hopefully have time to review some of it before the test in May. So it's a very, very fast paced class. Um, and there is a little bit of difference in content that I'll compare on another slide when um, people ask about comparing to the honors class, but I have that on another slide in just a second. OK. They often say that AP is rigorous, so this is trying to break down what does that mean? So the first step is there is a summer assignment, so at some point in late May, early June, I will connect again with the students at Calvert and Southern Middle and make sure they get a copy of the summer assignment and they know what to do and the students work through that on their own on the summer. So that's the first thing that makes it more difficult or maybe different from another class. It's a college level textbook. Um, it's a big fat textbook with 41 chapters in it um, and it, it written for college students. So it is more rigorous. It's less, um, you know, it has a lot more higher level vocabulary. There are some good pictures and images, but it's not as filled with some of that as some of the other textbooks that your students might have seen before. Um, we read that whole textbook um, as part of the course. So in terms of homework, that's probably the biggest thing. Um, you're reading about 60 pages a week by yourself. Um, and um, it's going to be again, it's spaced out and the kids know the schedule in advance so they can work around busy events, sports, jobs, whatever commitments they might have, but they're going to have to learn how to do that and space themselves out. Um, again, the students that are able to handle AP the best are probably the ones that are able to block aside that that time in order to kind of space it out. We also use primary and secondary source documents and they are again at the AP or college level, so they have different difficult vocabulary. They're hard to understand. Um, we have projects. Typically we have projects once a quarter and usually they're meant to help your, the overall grade while covering a topic um, sort of outside of what we can get to in, in within the regular class discussion. And then we have unit tests and essays and I'll talk more about that in a minute. OK, this is one of the common questions that I get from parents trying to figure out what choice is best for them is kind of like what's the main difference between the two classes. Um, so I have the regular US history class over here and then the AP here on the right. So the first thing to notice is the time periods. Um, oh, I sh this is not quite right. They go a little bit closer to reconstruction, so late 1800s um, and they go um, a little closer to today to 2010. I meant to update that and I forgot. I apologize for that, but you can still see it's only about half the content. So to explain the idea is eighth grade. They took they're taking US history, basically US history one 
And then the ninth grade course for everyone else, the one that's not AP, picks up where they left off and then goes to today, where we go back to 1491 and start over. So there's pros and cons. Obviously, we're covering a lot more content than the regular class is. So that's why we're going so fast. Um, the maybe pro behind that is that when students start the course, it is history that they have learned before. So sometimes that helps them kind of settle in. Um, we obviously go faster and we go at a more difficult and kind of more in depth conversations. Um, but sometimes that helps some students kind of, you know, assimilate in because it's somewhat familiar to them um, from past experiences. Um, for regular US history, some homework and projects. We have homework pretty consistently. I would say in order to be successful between actual homework and maybe like reviewing the notes from the day and studying for the ex upcoming tests that students should bank on about 45 minutes per night of, you know, kind of devoting to AP. And again, it's flexible in terms of you can maybe spend two hunks of 45 minutes one night. If you need to skip another night kind of idea, you can bounce it back and forth. But I would say about 45 minutes per night is is a usual requirement. For regular history, history fair is required. We are not required to do history fair in APUS because we're doing so many other things. We simply don't have the time to cover all of that and do history fair um, in depth. For testing in regular US history, it's a lot of multiple choice and some writing. For testing in AP, this is where it's very distinctly different. So one of the parts of AP is taking an AP exam at the end of the course. So that test is structured in such a way that includes different types of questions. So when we test in class to prepare, we are testing using those same elements. So they include multiple choice questions, short answer questions, which are about a paragraph, document based questions, which is a long essay, four to five paragraphs, with documents that they use. So they analyze documents and they use them as their evidence for their essay. So it's kind of like an essay, but it adds in the elements of documents. I know that they are working on them in the middle school. They should have seen them before. They have not seen them to the extent that we do them in AP, but they have some basic understanding of analyzing documents and writing out of it. Um, and then there's long essay questions, which are basically like a normal essay. Um, one thing that's difficult for students is that all of those elements have strict time limits. For example, the multiple choice questions, 55 questions in 55 minutes is what they get on the exam. So it's a question per minute. Um, short answers, they write three in 40 minutes, excuse me, 50 minutes. The document based question is an hour, 15 minutes to read and plan the documents, 45 minutes to write. The long essay question is five minutes to plan, 35 minutes to write. And that's what I find right now in the last couple of years with the freshmen coming in, their biggest adjustment is how fast they have to go on those tests. So we do start out the year. I give them extra minutes and then they slowly lose them as the time as the year goes on so that they're prepared for that challenge. But that's definitely something that's a difficult transition for some of the students, especially if tests make them nervous and, and those types of things. So that's something to consider as well about your student. Um, the regular US has high school level tests, text and resources that are used. We use college level. And then one specific difference um, that could be seen as a benefit of AP is the classes are weighted because they are difficult. Um, the grade is weighted at a multiplying factor about 1.1. So if you have an 80, it really counts in your GPA as an 88. So there is an incentive to take it as it does help your overall GPA, even if you're getting a B your GPA is waiting in a little um, heavier. Um, the other thing I apologize that I missed saying here, it's on the screen, I missed saying it, is that the tests are made in a more difficult fashion that students are expected to score around a 65%. That can be a little difficult for students, especially if they're used to getting straight A's, which a lot of these kids are. So we do projects and other assignments to balance things out and students are able to get A's for the course. Um, but again, it makes the experience a little bit dif different. Um, and again, you have to know your student when you're making this decision. If your student really needs to get that A, then this class might feel quite stressful. Um, 
if you are more focused on overall performance and how they're doing and that they're learning and growing, then this class makes a lot of sense in terms of getting them. You'll definitely see growth in what they can do as the year goes on. Um, I wanted to show the difference of what I'm talking about. So I stole a test question from a regular US history test, and then I have an AP question just to kind of show you the difference in the level. So this is a question. What was one domestic policy that pre President Clinton worked to reform in the 90s? Welfare, relations in the Middle East, passage of desegregation laws, ending the Cold War. So you can see those answers are pretty straightforward. There's one correct answer and we're ready to go. So in case you're curious and you didn't know, the correct answer is welfare. He worked on welfare reform in the 90s. Okay, so that's a pretty straightforward question. You know it if you were like learning the content. All right, here's an AP question and it's a screenshot, so it's a little fuzzy, um, but here's what's going on. We have what's called a stimuli, which is every question, every multiple choice question in AP has a stimuli. It's either a writing passage, a chart, a graph, some kind of data that they have to read and process and then questions that go with it. OK, so here's our stimuli. The art of big government is over, but we can't go back to a time when our citizens were just left to fend for themselves. We will meet them by going forward as one America, by working together in our communities, our schools, our churches and synagogues, our workplaces across the entire spectrum of our civic life. President Bill Clinton radio addressed to the nation 1996. OK, so you read that first and then you process. Which of the following actions by the Clinton administration best reflects the ideas about the scope of government expressed in the excerpt? So you have to like connect with what Clinton did, something Clinton did that matches this idea that he's portraying in this excerpt. So first one, the decision to pursue peacekeeping military interventions in the Balkans and Somalia. B, the enactment of welfare reform to restrict benefits and encourage self-reliance. C, the negotiation of free trade agreements among North American countries. D, the effort to enact universal health care legislation. So what makes this question much trickier, obviously first you have to analyze and understand what the passage is saying. And the other piece is if you know anything about Bill Clinton, he did something with all of four of these. So to some students, it feels like all four of these are right. Clinton did these different things. But what you have to connect is which of these things that he did is expressed in this particular passage. So the correct answer here is B, the enactment of welfare reform, because he's talking about that government can't be like providing all these things for people and and schools and churches and other places besides government need to provide some of these things. But again, it can feel more difficult because if you were studying Clinton at the time, you'd know that he did all of these things and there's key words in all of these that make them really strong distractors. All right, and then the other kind of question here is a lot of what AP questions asked to do as well, which is kind of synthesis and make connections from different time periods. So the idea expressed by Clinton in the excerpt was most similar to those of which 20th century president. So you're comparing him to another president. Well, students will typically struggle with this because if they know political parties, they know Clinton is a Democrat and most of these choices are Democrats except for Reagan. So they'll typically choose one of the others. Correct answer here is Ronald Reagan, because Ronald Reagan wanted to reduce the role of big government as well and cut back on things like welfare. So this is actually a similar idea, even though Clinton was of a different political party. So again, it might not be kind of what looks like as, as the first um, reaction. And again, a lot of my students, when they see this question, are thrown off by the political party kind of difference that they might know. So that's just a little sample to sort of show some of the difference in the test questions and why they're kind of at a different level. Um, overall goals for AP students that decide to take it, don't give up. Um, a lot of students, you know, start out and they kind of panic and get concerned because when they kind of feel it and realize the difficulty. Um, so don't give up. Realize that there is an adjustment period. They're freshmen, so they're adjusting to the building and the rules of high school, as well as this difficult class. So hang in there and kind of ride the wave out a little bit. Um, don't give in to the pressure to get an A. Again, that focus on just what my score is can typically cause a lot of stress in students. Focusing on one step at a time, can I get my homework done? What can I do to improve from this test to next test? What can I do differently? And really becoming a better student and learning those skills. Striving to improve on each unit is, is essentially part of that. Working on the writing skills and trying to improve, staying organized and doing their best to pass the AP exam or do their absolute best. 
OK, I've mentioned the AP exam a little bit here, so this is kind of the culmination of our class. It's taken in May. The cost varies from year to year. This year it's $96, so just a ballpark for you. And our tests includes multiple choice, short answer, um, and multiple essays. They have to write one DBQ and one LEQ. Um, they get choices for the LEQ, but they have to write um, both of those. And all of that is timed, and that's all in one big day, and it's a day that's set at the beginning of the year. Based on the score on that exam, students might qualify for college credit. So it depends on the school um, that you're looking at, but um, a, some, a lot of schools will give credit for a four or five, some will give for a three. Just kind of depends on, on the particular school. So one of the maybe negatives is as you go through the class, you can sit through the class, you can take the exam, and if you don't score well enough, you wouldn't get college credit. The positive way to look at that experience is it doesn't hurt you. The exam happens in May. The scores don't come in until over the summer. Doesn't affect your GPA. Doesn't affect anything else. And it still looks to colleges like you are trying, you're taking a challenging class, you're taking the tests. And a lot of students will do better on previous, or excuse me, on following um, AP tests as they go through high school because they kind of know what to expect now. And that sort of, you know, test anxiety or test fatigue improves over time. So even if it's not the greatest score, it's often a stepping stone and kids will often improve as they go from from there. So it's kind of, you know, kind of both sides here. Um, it is not required that the students take the exam. It's highly recommended because they're going to go through the work and be prepared for it, but it's not required. So overall, when you're making the decision, why should students take this class? Well, they learn how to craft historical uh, uh, arguments, excuse me, based on evidence, develop chronological reasoning skills, think deeper and hone in their argumentative skills, continued practice of writing and reading, be better prepared for future AP classes, and a better idea of what college classes will look like, will be like overall. Um, I asked a couple of my students to give me some of their thoughts. So the first question I asked is, what do you wish someone had told you about a push? So there, here are some of the responses. The amount of classwork and homework I would be doing. I wish someone would tell me how difficult the college board tests would be. As you can see, I am telling you that and I did tell them, but that maybe doesn't stick in as much as it, it should. Um, you need to have good time management. I wish I knew not to try to do an assignment in one sitting. Start a day or so after finishing the previous one and do it in parts. That's what I was mentioning about splitting up the homework. Um, to do well in the class, you have to study a little bit every day. OK, um, then I asked them for what advice they would give. So here's their uh, words of wisdom. Split your homework into chunks so you're not doing it all at once. Planning ahead is key for balancing with assignments and starting homework. Go in with a healthy attitude. Try your hardest. Get work in on time. And even though it's more work than you're used to, it's for your benefit. Don't procrastinate or you'll get behind. Take AP, it's worth it because you always have a chance for college credit and it's enjoyable. And then the last question I asked them was, what do you think is the most successful thing you need to do in order to be successful in APUSH? So the most important thing you need for APUSH is enthusiasm and the right mindset. You need to be able to stay consistent and on top of your work, but I think as long as you get the work done on time and pay attention in class, you should be able to do well in class. I think the most important thing is making a schedule and staying organized. I always heard that, but never took it seriously until I took this class. You always know when assignments are due, so making a plan and setting aside maybe 45 minutes to do a push work will help you a lot in the long run. Setting and taking notes is definitely the key to doing well in a push. So those are all from the students. Um, there are different kind of takes on things. OK, so that's the end of my formal presentation. I'll just leave my contact information up there for one uh, moment. And then I will stop displaying and go over to the chat. If you all have questions after this meeting or additional things that you need, you can reach me uh, via email. Obviously talking to um, your students guidance counselors as well. Um, the other piece of information that's good is their current history teacher are usually a good gauge of if a student is kind of ready and prepared. All right, so I'm going to take this down and stop sharing my screen so that I can see the chat.
So go ahead and feel free to fire away any questions that you have in the chat. Or if you're brave and you would like to unmute and ask out loud, you are welcome to do it that way as well. I'm sorry, but I joined a little later than I was. I didn't expect it to start as early. Okay. I got confused. Uh, what was talked about mainly in the first 10 minutes? So it was recorded, so I'll make sure that you get the link um, and you can go back and rewatch that. OK. And then also like. So I'm not really because like I know going from middle school to high school is going to be something that might be kind of hard, so I figured would it be possible to like start by just doing like more like honors instead of AP initially? And then once I do that, um, like then do AP history so that I can get used to high school, then do AP. So there's not any option where you could like change in the middle of the year, but no, I mean, but you could take honors as a ninth grader, um, mm -hmm. honors US history, and then your 10th grade year, the required, um, the required hist uh, social studies class is government, and that is offered at the AP level. And then when you get to your junior and senior year, there are AP classes available in other subjects like English, math, science, um, um, those, um, those things. And those, and the AP classes later on still give you um, college credit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then one final question. I'm just sure. curious, where does the ninety six dollars go? Like, what does it pay for? Just to pay for to take the exam, um, for for the college board test, and that's you only have a shot at college credit if you actually take the exam. No, but like, what do they do with the money? Like, is it like for making next year's tests or no, what? No, it, it doesn't go to, it doesn't go to the school. It goes to College Board, which is the company that um, administers the exam. So it's paying for administering the exam and all of their process. Okay. All right, I have some questions in the chat, so I'm going to go there. So I see, if, is there an a is there an AP practice exam prior to the actual exam and is a syllabus to work from? So yes and yes. Um, so obviously with COVID the last few years, our ability to review and do practice things has been a little, um, it's changed quite a bit. Um, so we'll see what this year kind of holds. I definitely do the samples um, with the students in class. There have been times pre COVID where we had the kids come in and do a full practice test. Um, what's probably more likely this year is doing it in like pieces. Um, but yes, and I use the tests throughout the year so that when they get to that exam, they feel prepared for the pressure, the time, the difficulty of the questions. So yes, um, and yes, the students are given the syllabus at the beginning of the year. Um, the success rate, well, pre COVID, it was about um, right around 50% we're getting a three or above. Um, with COVID, it's really hard to tell. I know my rate's been a lot lower, um, so that's harder. That's kind of harder to judge, um, and it doesn't necessarily stay the same from year to year. There's a lot of kind of different factors. Okay, let's see. Um, is it safe to assume that you that a push is generally the same across the high schools? Generally, yes. Um, we follow the same curriculum. It's a curriculum written from College Board, so we're teaching the same stuff. Um, I work with the teachers from the different high schools. Um, we have meetings at times and work together and collaborate and share ideas and things like that. So for the most part, yes, you're getting pretty much the same um, content. Um, someone shared a link for some practice um, questions from College Board. There are some available. Um, online and you can look up College Board will give you more information about what the class is supposed to be like and some practice ideas and things like that. So you're welcome to look at that. In the light of the controversy around race relations, will any portion of this course be eliminated or diluted? Um, so College Board sets the curriculum in terms of what needs to be um, addressed. Um, so that guides what we are are doing. Um, can the textbook be found online? 
electronically. So yes, um, we have some um, connections to an online textbook. Um, that students can access, they just need a code. Um, so that's like once they start the class, they could do it that way. Um, the problem is we used to have a code that lined up and then when the Java player thing happened and things changed, it didn't work. So the company is still letting us access online textbooks, but it's a different edition of our, our textbook is the 16th edition, I believe, and the one that they access online is the 17th. So some of the chapters aren't lining up perfectly. It's pretty much the same stuff, and I try to help the kids that want to do it electronically. Um, but it's maybe a little more challenging, but if a student specifically wants an electronic textbook, um, I can work with them and give them the tricks of, of how to figure that out. Um, also, um, the textbook is really for the homework. So I tell the students at the beginning of the year when they get it, we don't typically use that in class. And if we do, I can pull things up electronically that we're doing. So they can pretty much bring the textbook home and leave it at home where they are going to be doing their homework. So they don't necessarily need to be lugging it all around. And it is a heavy big book um, as well. So they don't need to you know, carry it everywhere they are going. Um, I think I hit all of them in the chat. If you had a question in the chat and you don't feel like I answered you, feel free to um, give me a holler. But I think I hit everything in the chat. OK, so i um, going to wrap this up here in just a minute. So first of all, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, to attend the meeting um, and learn more about AP US history. If you think of additional questions, as I said, please um, reach out to me via email, your child's current teacher about their recommendation, um, guidance counselors, um, all of that. Um, with any questions you have, I see one just popped up. How will be notified? So essentially, um, if you've had other students be um, who've gone through AP classes in the past, there used to be um, sort of a selection process for freshmen that were taking APUS. And essentially at this point, um, the requirements to join are based on the teacher recommendation. So their teacher does need to sign off and recommend them for AP. And they needed to return that interest letter to their current teacher. Um, but if they do those items, they will be um, in APUS. So there's not a selection process like there had been a few years ago, if that makes sense. So if you have additional questions, you're welcome to stay on, but I'm going to um, go ahead and let you all go. So um, you are. Back in the regular session for all of incoming freshman parents at 630. Um, and you should have that information. Miss Ponte, our guns counselor is on in case anyone is confused of where to go next, but you have a little bit of downtime and then that one starts at 630. Yep, and I'll put that link in the chat as well so that everybody has that. Awesome. Thanks so much, Miss Ponte. Thanks, parents. I look forward to working with you next year. Email me if you have any questions. No problem. Thank you all for taking the time to.